Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to be going over something a little bit different. Instead of doing a tutorial or anything, I'm actually going to go over my visual effects process and what I use to plan a shot. This process is just seven steps that I usually go through and maybe it will kind of help you guys with your shots. And so I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the first one, which is analyze the shot. So when I say analyze the shot, I am not talking about the entire video. I'm talking about one VFX shot, one fusion comp, one little clip of video. Maybe it's even just one angle. Let's say I have a 30 second video. I have to break down each one of those VFX shots for the entire 30 second video. So what specific effects are gonna be needed for that specific shot or that five seconds of video? This is what I'm gonna be looking at. I need to rotoscope the foreground or maybe use a green screen technique or a combination of both. Say I wanna replace the background. Maybe I wanna key out the sky and do a full sky replacement. And I wanna add some fire or explosions in the background. So each one of those effects needs to be tackled separately. So each one of those effects needs to be further broken down. Let's just say that we're just gonna break down the roto. So when we want to roto out the foreground, let's say we want to roto out a person. And so we're going to need a full track mat because that person is moving. Even if it's just a little bit, they're still moving. I want to retain the hair detail. So I'm going to need to consider how I'm going to mix a solid mat with a gray mat. It's going to be five seconds long for 24 frames per second. I'm going to need to roto out 120 frames. Now, maybe not all of those frames are going to need individual rotos. And maybe only some of those rotos are actually going to be moving. But let's just say that I consider that to be a difficult roto, I need to figure out how long it's going to take me to complete that roto. Now, this might not be a realistic preview of how long it'll take to actually roto something out, but it's good to note that you need to start figuring out how long it takes you to do specific effects that's gonna be key into making sure that you actually are able to make whatever deadline you're setting. Even if it's just a deadline that you're setting for yourself. So skills, do I need to learn how to rotoscope? How do I make a track mat? Do I know what a track mat even is? Do I need to learn an entirely new skill in order to complete this effect? Are my roto skills good enough? Just keep in mind that you need to know what skills are gonna be needed for each one of these shots. So for in this instance, it is just roto, but let's say for replacing a background, I need to know what skills are needed for that. I need to know what skills are needed for keying out the sky and what skills are needed for comping in fires and explosions. Everything is going to require some type of skill. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that either you or all of your teammates have those skills or you're gonna to need to know what skills you're gonna to need to do what effects. All right, so once you've analyzed the shot, you can go ahead and start gathering your references. Now, references are super important. In fact, if you're not using references, it's like you're going in blind and more the better. I actually collect references from all different types of effects and I use that a lot of times to influence and inspire me as well when I'm making my own effects. So what are references? References could be anything from videos, pictures, even ideas. You know, we all think we know what an explosion or a candle or an iceberg looks like, but in reality, when we start creating something without a reference, we tend to remember things a little bit more surreal and a little bit more exaggerated than they really are. So it's nice to actually get some explosions and look at those explosions while you're creating your own explosion. And the nice thing about references is you don't need to worry about copyright or anything because you're not actually going to use that in your video. You're just going to be looking at it and making sure that whatever you're building kind of matches like a more real realistic reference. Grab any Hollywood or indie movies and just watch them through and see what they're doing for their effects. Not just their practical effects, but also their visual effects. Sometimes it's really good to use those as a benchmark for either inspiration or even just a aspiration as to see what hopefully your finished product should look like. So time management. Time management is a huge one. So when it comes to time, obviously there's never enough time. So how much time do we actually have? That's gonna be one of the main questions you need to ask yourself or you need to ask your client when you're taking on a job because that's going to determine whether you're gonna actually be able to do the job or not. It may need to go to somebody else if you're not able to complete it in that amount of time. But you're not gonna know how much time things take unless you actually know how long it takes you or your team to actually do these things. Is it going to be enough? If it's not going to be enough, do you ask for more time or do you just extend the deadline? How can you save time? One of the things you're gonna to need to start looking at is how you can cut corners in order to save time. One of those ways to save time might be to use stock video or video effects in order to save that time. And there's nothing wrong with either finding free stock video or free effects or purchasing them off of other sites. 
So we've all heard time is money and lots of time equals cheaper and less time equals more money. Now, what does that mean? That just means that if you have less time to do something, you're probably gonna need to allocate more resources towards that shot. So you may need to schedule two people as opposed to one person towards that shot or four people or six people. And if you have less time, you may need to actually purchase things in order to finish that shot faster. All right, and then that brings us to obstacles. These aren't necessarily in a particular order. Identifying obstacles is probably something that I do really early on when I'm doing the planning phase. And I usually break that up into constraints, knowledge, and manpower. But when it comes to constraints, there's usually just a few constraints that are usually topping my list. Of course, the number one is always time. Do I have enough time? The answer is usually no, but it's a matter of where can I cut corners in order to make those time constraints? Tools, do I need a new tool? I know that I am really big on, it doesn't really matter what compositor or what VFX program or what 3D program you're using, they all are the same essentially, but in reality, there are some programs that are better at other things, like Houdini might be better at 3D simulations, Blender is free, Maya might be better at animation, 3DS Max might be better at something else. Whatever the tool is that you need, are you able to get by with the tools that you have? And then where are your problem areas? You're probably going to want to front load your problem areas so that you have enough time to work on things that you know will be difficult. And then do I need to cut corners? I know none of us likes to cut corners, but that is a real thing in visual effects. There are corners that you can get away with cutting and sometimes you need to do that. But what's important is to know that what corners you're gonna cut ahead of time because you don't wanna have to try and figure out corners that could have been cut that you actually ended up doing. So after constraints, usually it's knowledge. Like, do I have all of the knowledge to actually do these effects or these shots? Where am I gonna learn to do all this stuff? Obviously, a lot of us turn to YouTube in order to learn these things. Some of us went to college. I went to college for this. And to be honest, I think everything that I learned at college, you could absolutely learn it on YouTube. Is it possible given my current abilities to do the effects that I want? You may run into the realization that you currently don't have the abilities to do the shots that you want. So maybe Maybe you have to lower your expectations. But if you're working for a client, you may have to lower the client's expectations as well. All right, so knowledge, definitely one of the big constraints. And then of course, manpower. Are you doing this alone? Is it possible to hire some of this work out? And what skills do your friends or coworkers have? You definitely wanna take into account everybody's strengths and weaknesses on the team. If you have somebody that's better at Roto, then obviously you may want to kick over Roto work to that person. And if you have somebody that has a really good eye for compositing, maybe that would be your main compositor. Positor. If you're really good at building tools, then you might be the technical director. It all depends on what your guys' strengths and weaknesses are, and that doesn't mean that other people can't do different things. It's just something you're going to want to take into consideration in the planning phase, because the better somebody is at something, generally speaking, the faster they are, and this is all about getting things done in an efficient manner. Obstacles are usually what kills a project faster than anything, so if you can identify those quickly, you can also work to mitigate them as well. A lot of this comes down to research and development. For me, it's very important and it's something that I deal with a lot. I'm constantly looking into what techniques will be needed for each of these shots. Will I need a new technique? Do I need to learn something new? Will it be cost effective or time efficient to make a tool? Sometimes making procedural tools will save you a lot of time, but generally speaking, it is really only time efficient if you're going to be doing the same thing over and over and over again. Of course, making rigs for animation is absolutely important. At some point, we're going to need to get to the implementation phase or the work phase. This is where everything actually gets done. And these aren't in any specific order. Obviously, you got to get the rotos done. You got to get the simulations done. Any CG work, animation, composite work, map painting, tracking, etc. It doesn't really matter what program you're using. Like I teach how to use the DaVinci Resolve Fusion page just because it's free. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with After Effects or Blender or Nuke. This is where the bulk of the work gets done. And just because this is where the work gets done, this doesn't mean that this is the only phase that you can work on stuff. It's a good idea to get in the habit of pre-staging any of the difficult shots, like something like this shot in Avengers Endgame. There was just so many shots that needed to get done. You can block all of this stuff out and start getting shots without even having all of the hero assets. 
maybe get in some of the atmosphere, the base backgrounds, just start plugging in things so that you know where they're going to go so that all you need now is all of your CG models and all of your green screen plates, all of your background footages, all your hero shots, and now you can just put everything together and start to composite it. And finally, it doesn't end just because you did the work. If you haven't gotten into the habit of doing iteration, you absolutely need to because one is none and two is one. It's guaranteed that once you finish something and you show it to the director or you show it to the client, that they are going to hate it and you didn't give them any options. So it's back to the drawing board. Versions and revisions. So versions or iterations they give your client or director options by changing up the effects, making them slightly larger, smaller, maybe just having a very small, subtle explosion. You wanna give your director options. What I like to do is I'll give them my favorite version and then I'll also give them my least favorite version. So at least they have two options to choose from. And if you're lucky, they'll pick the option that you like. And sometimes you can make one version that's normal and then one that's absolutely over the top. And it's always amazing when they choose the over the top one, but that's not really your problem. And let's say you don't give them options. The next stage you're gonna get is revisions. These are usually requested by the client or the director. Maybe you made an explosion, but they were really looking for a nuclear explosion and not just a house fire. And that's fine. The more procedural your process is, the quicker these can be knocked out. So just keep in mind that this is the visual effects process for one shot. Say you're gonna be a visual effects supervisor, you would have to do this for an entire movie. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.